Hey guys and welcome again to Into the Night. This afternoon I'm going to do another review for some of these new thermal binoculars from Infra, the Gemini GEH50R. Um, now these are really good little binoculars. You've probably seen me using them in some of my videos I have been using them for the last few weeks and but I thought I'd just show you what comes in the box and I'll give you a bit more of a detailed um, review on it and my thoughts on it. So anyway, I'll see you over at the table and we'll get into it. Okay, so now this is all the, um, the things that come in the box with it. To so start off here, we've got a strap for a harness strap for the binoculars. We've got a little infrared illuminator. There's no battery came in that, so it does take an 118650 battery, so I'm going to be using this this one here, it's a Samsung 18650. Um, they give you a night core charging lead and a charger. So they're a pretty good charging unit. Here's a little mount thing for mounting the illuminator onto these. That's something I haven't really played around with much as the infrared. Um, as I don't know how good that is, so I might test it out a bit later. Um, there's a little tripod mount. We've got a like the charging um, USB charging thing, but it's the wrong plug for Australia, so I can't use that in, without an adapter. It's a lens cleaning cloth. There's a instruction manual, which isn't too bad actually, and there's a nice bag for carrying all carrying it all in. So, and but last of all, here's the binoculars themselves. Now these are a very nice unit. I think at the, at the time of doing this video they retail for about six and a half thousand dollars. They are a 640 by 512 thermal sensor in them but as well as a like your infrared like your night vision um, in there. So you got two, there's your thermal that side, your night vision that side and you got a 1200 meter laser range finder in the middle. It runs on two 18650 batteries which are in this compartment also it comes with these other they, they attach to the strap so you can take your straps on and off and here's another little thing that comes in a packet to put on this door so you don't actually lose the door because otherwise it'll come right off so it runs on two 18650 battery they supplied little night core batteries with this one and yeah, the battery times I've had so far, run times, I've got used them all night and still had battery to go, to spare. So they say about eight hours run time and I reckon it's, oh, or is it six hours? I just forget. I'll put the specifications up on the screen so you can have a look at them. And yeah, those, they're pretty, um, pretty good little one. This is the GEH50R. So you've got 640 by 512 pixel resolution. There's a 12, 12 pixels, like 12 micron pixel size. You get a sub 20, 25 millikelvin sensor. Um, 50 hertz refresh rate, 50 mil objective lens. Uh, field of view is 8.8 .8 by 6.6 degrees. 2600 meter detect, uh, detection range on like a human size heat source, you can, you can see the rest, but 1200 meter laser range finder, runs on two 18650 batteries, gear displays at 1024 by 780, 768, OLED screen, it's a 0.39 inch screen, which sounds pretty small, but when you get up to your eyes and you got the two of them, it's, it looks a lot bigger than a normal like your monoculars. Operating time up to six hours. So that would be all the six hours, I think. So it's got all inbuilt like video, audio recording, and everything. So, yeah, 960 grams with no battery. So, about a kilogram all up. Now, so these, so I'll look at to show you around, around the binoculars. You've got a 
tight uh, USB-C port in the bottom for getting your data off or um, updating the device. You can't it hasn't got a live feed out. So you got your focus for your night vision, your digital night vision. You got your focus for your thermal, and these these things slide in and out to adjust for your eyes. I'd say that's the microphone in the middle there, and you got your all your buttons here. So when you're holding it, they're right where your fingers sit, and the buttons are really well placed. Um, and even these under here, so you can be holding it up into here and focusing your um, your thermal or your night vision. You also got your diopter adjustments on here for each eye. So now I had it set for my eyes, and now for being wrecked at all. These caps, flip flip out caps, are really nice. They can, if you don't even use the thermal, which I do most of the time, you just flip that open. You can do a thermal and digital night vision with the thermal overlay, so that's pretty cool. But most of the time, I'm just using the thermal side of it. But they're really nice. Nice binoculars to use. So anyway, well, go through or turn it on. You press and hold the power button for a few seconds, and I'll see if I can get it to come on. There you go. It's, there's your screen. So it gives you all your information. Or I might get it up on a tripod. And when you re do a screen record, it doesn't record all the uh, information on the C C on the screen. So anyway, I'll get up on a tripod and show you inside it. Okay, so this, I'll try and do this as best I can through the eyepiece of the binoculars, so you get to see exactly how they perform and through looking through your own eyes. So now, using these buttons on the top. If you just hit the power button once, that just blacks the screen out. You hit it again, brings it straight back on. Another thing, if you want to refresh it, you go on your right hand with your middle button and your down arrow. You push them both together and that recalibrates the sensor. So that's just two things of mentions first. Now we've got the middle one on your left hand is your range finder. So you can press that and that gives you a, a reading. So as you can see, there's some cattle down the, across the gully there at about 620 metres or so. I'll just see if I can get a range. 634 metres. Out there, there's some cattle just there. But now if, I want to if you want to change your colour on it, um, you press the, on your right hand, you hold the up, up arrow down and that changes to black hot and the red hot into sort of like rainbow or that colour one, whatever you meant to call that one and then back to white hot again so you got four different colour palettes that you can use I'll leave it on black hot because you can sort of see whoop, I'm bump, bumping stuff here um, so if you want to change to your change it to the infrared like in day daytime view you can hit the hit the button um, your, your up arrow I'll just try and get that into focus so you can hit the up arrow I think that might be a thermal overlay now you hit your up arrow again and that's there yeah, that's straight that's just the digital night vision or your daytime optics so then you can hit it again and it goes to thermal so it'll, that'll do a that's got a thermal overlay with a black hot so if I go and change the thermal back to um, white hot or something go back to white hot now if I do that you can see that the cattle in the, there have um, Let's see them in a bit. You can see the cattle day are a little bit white. So, but I'll just get out of that again. Back to your thermal. So, just 
just get them into focus. So now go through the menu system if you go just a quick press on the menu button that brings up your quick menu you can cycle the up and down arrows through that menu and you can hit the middle one to select so you can turn your Wi-Fi so you can connect to the app um, if you turn that DMC that tells you like your angles and elevation like how much angles you're on but I'll leave that off you can turn your microphone on your hotspot tracking um, you can turn that on so it'll it'll show you where the different hotspots are but I find that's annoying so I'll leave that off you can have the turn the infrared enhance IR enhance on which I know it just sort of sharpens up your image a bit I quite like it off it depends on the situation or how you use that um, so that's your quick menu to get out of that and get out of any menu just hit the power button once and that just gets out of that so if you long press on the menu button which is the middle one on your right hand so you got your display up the top so you can click on that and that you can then you can change in that you can just use your menu button click your menu button to change your parameters for your brightness I'll leave it on three so you can change the image brightness change your contrast or you can actually even put a, a reticle on it as well but I'm not shooting with it so I, I don't need that <coughs> so then if you hit your um, hit your power button that goes back to your main your backer menu so then you can go to here you can actually go through into that one browse your uh, media I haven't got anything on here at the moment but so if I wanted to I'll get out of all that if you use your top button on the left hand you your closest button is your pointer finger in your left hand you can press that once and that takes a picture you can see up the icon up in the top corner I'll take another one there that comes up for a bit to tell, lets you know you took a picture or if you press and hold it it comes up and you can see it started recording up the top so this is I'll do a bit of a just switch to the audio from this as well now so you can see that's recording but now if I stop that recording I'll go now to back to my main menu so press long press and hold the menu button go down here to the media hit the menu button again file browse and there you go you got um, your media files in there so you can click to watch watch them through but anyway I'll go back press the power button and get out of that now I'll press it a second time to get out of that menu have a location and your Wi-Fi settings, your date and time, your system and the other information. Now to zoom in you press your down button like you so you with your ring finger and your right hand and so that's sort of just your digital zoom and if you press and hold that button you'll get your picture in picture now you can have picture in picture and actually set so you have that as thermal and you can set your other one to your night vision so you can have sort of the both of them displaying at once um, or you can press and hold it again it'll cycle through you can see there's a cow there with their head sort of looking this way the, like the picture the image quality in the night vision the daytime viewing isn't that crash hold I find um, it's sort of still very pixelated and not as clear I find the thermals a lot better to use so I'll hit that again so there's the thermal overlay on that picture in picture and you, as you can see that doesn't quite line up exactly but it's not a scope it's only for finding your target so it's that's not real necessary 
I just leave it back, leave it off most of the time. Because you've got a really good screen in here. It's a, it looks really nice and big in your, um, to look through. So I'll just try and focus that a bit better. Um, now I'm hitting it again. Now with your range finder, which is your middle button on your left hand, um, if you give it one press, that just takes one reading. But if you long press, that you can see the icon in the top right hand corner goes red. And then see so if you move it around, it'll actually give you like a live readout of wherever. I see down the bottom, it tells you the distances. So um, it's picking up probably grass and whatever else, but about 625 metres to those cattle. So anyway, I think that's about all in the menu system I can show you. The one thing I didn't touch on before, um, this is the infrared illuminator. It comes with the binoculars. I'll just sort of give you a brief rundown of how they work too. So I'll put that into under into there. I'll tighten it up a bit. Doesn't fall out. Now these, this will sit. Um, you can sit it around in there if you want to, and that little flip, that little catch, just catches under there. And that. So then you can just tighten up that to get it lined up to with where you you're pointing the binoculars. I don't know how good that illuminator is, I might take it out later and I'll put a bit of footage up with it and see if I can get it to show up anything. So, yeah. Obviously you're not going to work during the day. Now it's just with that illuminator, don't ever look in there, pile it up to your phone or something if you want to see if it's on or off and you have your own camera and you can it'll actually pick up the light soon so you're not hurting your eyes um, but to turn it on um, you give it one press if you can see that I don't know whether you can um, and then you, you just give it like a, a little like a quick press and that changes your brightness settings and then you press give it a full click to turn it off so Okay, I'm just showing you the. This is the using the night vision, the night vision at night with the supplied infrared torch. And that's the torch in its brightest setting, looking at the power pole at about 20 meters. So it's <laughs> not very good. It's very poor. Um, or excuse for a torch, so I definitely I should get it. See if I think I've got another old infrared torch there. Um, I might be able to use. So it leaves a lot to be desired. I'm just trying to look up the other side of the house yard there. 50 meters, you can't see anything. So well, I just put this torch with the Gemini binoculars. Now this is a infrared torch I used to use with a night vision scope I had uh, a few years ago and it was a pretty bright little torch and I just tried it out there and it doesn't seem to be any different than the other torch so I think the problem is not with the torch but rather these binocular or the, the sensor mustn't be good enough to be able to pick up a lot of light so it's probably more so just meant for daytime use and then for nighttime you use the thermal so okay to wrap up with my final thoughts now i've been using these um, a fair bit in the last few weeks since i got them and they're really nice to hold in your hand if i just take the tripod mount off of here they are really good really good to look through they just sort of fit your hand, your buttons go, your fingers just sit on the buttons really nicely and the wheels under here just go good and just perfect for your thumb. If you're using daytime, these little rubber caps are 
very important you get such a they just block out any light around your eyes so you can see so much better they are a little bit heavier to hold like around your neck than what some other ones are so you if you it's more weight you got to carry if you want to concentrate on weight and have as least amount of weight as possible you might be better off with a monocular but I tell you what after using these things it's hard to go back to a monocular when you're actually holding them up to your eyes because you get a so much less eye fatigue holding them in the looking through it with both eyes rather than just one eye and the screen is so much bigger and it's more zoomed in so which I find is not as good for when you're doing when you've got something that's sort of close your field of view isn't as big but out at a distance you can spot things really easy like this little bird just sitting out in a little bush out there I can see it quite well even though today's been a pretty stinking hot day It'll be up to at least 35 37 degrees Celsius so even then I can still pick up the cattle see the cattle down there see a little bird sitting on a bush at probably oh, what's the distance of that about 84 meters to that bush so yeah you can see all my, like, my targets out there you scan around the hills and switch it to there's probably a couple of kangaroos sitting out there I think maybe not sure it might be just some prickly pear or something so every there's a lot of a lot of things have got a lot of heat in them at the moment um, that power pole is 265 metres. So yeah, overall, I think they're a terrific little unit. They were definitely worth the worth their value. Um, the neck strap is really comfortable to wear. One thing, as I mentioned earlier, the image, the picture quality of your in your daytime viewing for your night vision, digital night vision, oh, it could be a bit better. Um, picture quality you can it is usable and if, especially if something's not out too far away you can definitely identify it very quickly and easily the other good thing it seems to have like built-in like image stabilization so if you're trying to hold it up it's not really really shaky it's still got a bit of shake to it but it's not over the top um, the caps are just stick on there, sit on there really good and they're easy to flick off and you're not going to lose them because they just hang down. Um, which I, my cousin was using them a while ago and he said that was a bit of a pain when he was, when I was driving and he was up on the back of the ute and I was driving and these were in, flapping in the wind and they kept flapping up in front of <laughs> in front of the lens but it's not really a, a big issue in my opinion. Um, what else can I tell you? The pictures, I really, really like to use them. They, the picture is really good, but uh, especially the thermal is excellent image in the thermal. Anyway, that's it for now for the review on these. I'll leave the links in the description below. You can go over to Infra's site and check them out. Otherwise, if you want to find somewhere where you can buy them, you have to contact your dealers, but I'm not sure where or what the availability is of these yet, they're a reasonably new unit, they were only released a couple of months ago. Um, so I've talked to the barn in Oki where I'd, I get my gear from and they said they haven't got any in stock in there yet so uh, when I talk to them so you never know. Try it. If you head over to the Ground Force International um, they should have it on the website, I'll leave a link there in below as well for that. They've got a dealer map so you all the infra dealers throughout Australia, you can check them out. Or if you're overseas, you'll have to try and find a dealer overseas. I'm not sure I can't help you with that one, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, go and check them out. If you've got the cash to get them, I can definitely recommend them. It's a very nice, very nice binocular to use. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, the other thing I didn't like, well I've been having trouble with it because I use Apple products like my iPhone and 
Mac, MacBook Pro for editing and everything. I've had a fair bit of trouble getting the footage off of this. So what I've had to do is download it onto my wife's Windows computer and then it save, saves the files into an AVI file. So I've had to go and, go and convert them into an MP4 just to be able to show you guys the, the video. So the video quality that you get is nowhere near as good as what you see in the eyepiece but that's always the same for all thermals. So anyway, I'll leave the review at that. Go and check them out and I'll see you on the next video.